Here's how to use the OBS virtual camera with a green screen so you can remove the background and display visuals behind you. Marcus here helping you engage your audience. First, set up your green screen correctly. I'm using the Elgato green screen, which comes in a floor case and then rolls up from there. Check it out with the link in the video description. Ensure that your green screen is evenly lit with no sharp shadows that will make it easier for you to correctly remove the background. Make sure that your green screen fills the entire camera frame. If you're not able to do this, then stick around for the bonus tip at the end of the video. For the next steps, we're going to jump over to OBS Studio on the computer. It is a free and open source video production studio, and you can download it with the link in the video description below. Here we are inside of OBS Studio. There's nothing on the canvas yet, so let's start by adding a camera. Click the plus button here in the sources section, and then pick video capture device. It's going to ask you to name the device. Mine is called the Canon M50, so I'm going to enter that there. At the top of this dialog box, you will find a list of all the cameras that are installed in your system. The EOS webcam utility is already selected, so I'm happy with that, and I'm going to click OK. The camera is added at its default resolution. I'm going to press Ctrl F to fill the whole screen. The last thing I want to do is lock the camera in place so that I don't accidentally move it. Next, we're going to remove the green screen background. Click on your camera and then on filters. And then in this effects filter list, we are going to add a filter. Click on plus down here and select chroma key. It will ask you for a name. You can leave it as chroma key there. And you will see that that immediately removes our background because green is already selected here. If you are not getting a great chroma key effect, then play around with these three settings here at the top. But for me, this looks pretty good. So I'm going to click on close. And now my background has been removed. Now that we have removed the background, we can also place elements behind me. Let's do an image. For example, I'm going to click on the plus button here in the sources section, and then I'm going to pick image. It's going to ask me to name this element. Let's call this my custom background. To pick your image file, click on browse here. I'm going to pick my custom martini olive background right there and then click OK. And then I'm going to click OK down here as well. As you can see, the background fills the screen, and that is because it is on top of the other elements. All I have to do is click on the background here and then on the down arrow, and now the background is below me. The last thing I want to do is lock it in place so that I don't accidentally move it. You could also show slides behind you. I am going to add a custom slideshow as a background instead. First, I'm going to hide the background that we already have. Next, I'm going to click on plus down here, and then I'm going to add an image slideshow instead. To add my slides, I have to go down to this section here and click on plus, and then I'm going to add a whole directory full of slides. As soon as I add the slide, they will appear in this dialog box, but you will see that they are actually cycling every eight seconds. And that is because 8,000 milliseconds has been automatically populated here and the slide mode is set to automatic. I'm going to switch that to manual instead so that I can control my slides and then I'm going to press OK here. Now, once again, let's put the slides behind me by highlighting it there and then going down one level. And once again, I'm going to lock the slides in place to cycle between the slides. I can use these buttons here, but there is one thing that we should fix before we move this over to our video conferencing software. The camera is currently blocking the slides. So for slides like this, what I recommend that you do is that you move it a little bit to the right. So I'm going to unlock the camera first. And then I'm simply going to grab it and drag it to the right hand side of the slides and making sure that it is also vertically centered. Let's say that I'm happy with that. And now I can go back to my slides and continue to cycle them because I have more space on the right hand side. 
you can really put whatever you want behind you. For example, it could be a video like I'm showing right now. It could be a web page behind you that you can actually interact with and scroll and click around. Or it could be a PowerPoint presentation where the animations actually work. Before we move this setup over to our video conferencing software, there is one last thing we need to do in OBS Studio, and that is to activate the virtual camera. So I'm going to go to the right hand menu here and click on start virtual camera. In the next step, we're going to jump over to Zoom and bring this setup into our Zoom meeting. Here we are inside of a Zoom meeting. All I have to do here is to make sure that the OBS virtual camera has been selected. And when I switch it on, our layout from OBS Studio will come through right here inside of Zoom. There is one important setting here inside of Zoom that you should be aware of. Go into your video settings and make sure that this option right here, mirror my video is off. If it is on, the slides are going to look the wrong way to you. This only impacts what you see and not what the other participants see. But I still recommend to have mirror my video off inside of Zoom. I really like the fact that you can toggle the mirroring on and off in Zoom. And this also works really well inside of a WebEx meeting. However, some other video conferencing applications do not support this, such as Microsoft Teams and Google Meet. In those applications, your video will always be mirrored. But remember, this only impacts what you see yourself. For your other meeting participants, your video will appear correctly. And if it makes it easier for you when you're presenting, I recommend that you look at your OBS screen instead of your video conferencing screen when your video is mirrored. Getting value? Hit like. Here's that bonus tip in case your green screen does not fill your whole camera frame. The first thing I'm going to do is unlock the camera so that I can change the framing. And then I'm going to hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and drag from the sides. So I'm pressing Alt now and then I'm dragging to crop out that part which is not covered by the green screen. And then I'm going to do that on the right hand side here as well. And now we have eliminated those parts where I have no green screen. Next, I'm going to reapply my chroma key filter. I'm going to click on my camera, then on filters. And when I apply my chroma key filter, as in the past, the background is removed. When I click close, you will see that the background is completely gone because I cropped the camera. And now if I add one of my backgrounds here, for example, this background, it will completely fill the frame. The slides I use in the background are about some best practices for video conferencing. Download my free video conferencing checklist with the link in the video description or go to marcuspresents.com slash checklist. To get your audio from OBS Studio to your video conferencing application, click or tap the screen right here. In that video, I will take you through the setup process step by step. My name is Marcus Seppala. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.